my fellow Americans. Tonight, I want to speak with you about our nation's unprecedented response to the coronavirus outbreak that started in China and is now spreading throughout the world. Today, the World Health Organization officially announced that this is a global pandemic. Dear Lord, let your holy angel be with me. Stunning announcement. Hollywood legend Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, revealing they have the coronavirus. So are you fearful? You, uh, I mean, I am. I mean, I'm pretty sure we have an answer for that, too. But I'm not going to panic. Yeah, there's like no vaccine, which is pretty crazy. More deaths, more cases as thousands of Americans begin to self-quarantine. It poses a greater global threat than terrorism. Now here in New York City, a state of emergency declared as well. The turmoil on Wall Street amid the coronavirus outbreak. There's no treatment known. There's no vaccine. This as New York bans all gatherings of 500 people. Panic is rippling through the global stock market. More than 10,000 school closures nationwide. Shops, cafes, restaurants, bars, all forced to close. And rising fear. Officially a global pandemic. All games for all teams suspended until further notice. As many as 45 million of us might be killed by it. Faith must be fostered by the man or woman you see every day in the mirror. It is down. Oh my goodness, I thought this was just triple digits. George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd repeatedly told the officers that he could not breathe after an officer knelt on his neck. The family of George Floyd held a memorial in his memory. My brother's gone, but the Floyd name still lives on. <laughs> George Floyd. You are gone, but not forgotten. Because of you, we've come together. This is for George Floyd. It's so late to be angry. To kneel, to be quiet. We're saying your name. We're saying their names. We're being loud. We're being brave. We're laughing, we're crying, we're getting engaged, we're getting married, we're changing the world. each other and let's get it right man today is the day we gonna stand up for our community man if we could do this we could do more we just gotta continue on pushing and don't give up Daddy's 
represent the world. They spied on my campaign. You know what they found? Nothing. But this is big stuff. This is stealing millions of votes, and it's going to be very hard. Now, we're in courts all over the country, and hopefully we have judges that are going to give it a fair call. Because if they give it a fair call, we're going to win this election. The only way they can take this election away from us is if this is a rigged election. We're going to win this election. We're going to win this election. So just, I'm just saying, we cannot have these live, we call them live, some people call them universal, I like the word live, these live mail-in ballots sent to everybody, including mostly people that never asked for them. Yeah. What they're doing is using COVID yeah. to right. steal an election. Right. Right. They're using exactly. COVID to defraud the American people, all of our people, of a fair and free right. election. Here, and we here. can't do that. When 17-year-old Trayvon Martin died at the hands of George Zimmerman in 2012, protests sprung up around the country, demanding everything from changes to Florida's stand-your-ground laws to gun control. When do our children get to just be children? But one of the protests Black Lives Matter. quickly took on a life of its own. The phrase Black Lives Matter was first coined in 2013 by three African-American women in response to George Zimmerman's acquittal. But the term didn't gain widespread use until August 9, 2014, when Michael Brown was shot and killed by a white police officer in Ferguson, Missouri. Protesters swarmed the city, holding signs that read, Black Lives Matter. The overwhelming police response to the protests kept the slogan in the news for days. While Ferguson began to calm down, the combination of social media, ubiquitous video cameras, and the recurrence of African-American deaths at the hands of police meant that it was only a matter of time before Black Lives Matter reappeared. On behalf of all New Yorkers, I want to offer my deepest condolences to the family and loved ones of Eric Garner. Four months later, when a police officer was acquitted in the death of Eric Gardner, an unarmed African-American man in Staten Island who was choked to death on camera, Black Lives Matter was everywhere. Justice for Eric Gardner! Justice for Eric Gardner! In the days after Gardner's death, rallies were held in five cities, with protesters calling themselves part of the Black Lives Matter movement. Almost a year later in Baltimore, Freddie Gray, a 25-year-old African-American man, was chased by police and later found in the back of a police van with 80% of his spine severed. Riots ensued and the damage cost an estimated $9 million. Stand up and say loudly and clearly, Black Lives Matter. And activists from Black Lives Matter affiliates have since confronted politicians at campaign events. <laughs> We're gonna give you, we're gonna let you on the mic. We're gonna give you the mic. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! The online movement has taken on a life of its own. And unlike a lot of hashtag activism, the Black Lives Matter banner has generated a sustained rallying cry for change and real world results. When the University of Missouri came under fire for failing to address persistent complaints about racism on campus, Black Lives Matter contributed to protests that toppled the school's president. Nobody is free until all of us are free. That's the end goal. Again, the first thing that kind of sent me on this search was when I saw in an interview that Patrice Colors, I think that's how you say her name, one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, said that she was a trained Marxist uh, and a trained organizer. We actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. 
uh, that really didn't mean anything to me until I stumbled upon this book by a guy named Manning Johnson called Color, Communism, and Common Sense. Manning Johnson was a black communist in the 50s, and he wrote a book basically detailing a strategy that began to be implemented in the 30s, I believe it was, where Stalin had the idea of using racial tension and creating racial tension and conflict to bring down capitalism in America to try to overthrow the government. Um, and they were using black people as the spearhead for that movement, basically using us as expendables. And in, in Manny Johnson's book, he details all these things. A communist minister uh, named Archibald, I forgot his last name, uh, persuaded him to join the Communist Party USA. Uh, Archibald told Manning Johnson that it was the communist, the Marxist ideology that was going to be the savior of the black people and that the communists were the only group that really cared about the need of the Negro, which was the term at that time. So Manning Johnson believed that lie. And as a result, he began to go to communist uh, gatherings. Once they saw in the local communist uh, gatherings that, that he was very intelligent, they sent him all the way to Russia. They sent him to Moscow to be literally trained as an operative, then to come back to the United States and actually begin to indoctrinate other blacks. What happened was when he got over there in Moscow, he began to see exactly what the Marxist ideology was all about. You see, the useful idiots, the, the leftists who are idealistically believing in the beauty of Soviet socialist or communist or whatever system, when they get disillusioned, they become the worst enemies. That's why my KGB instructors specifically made the point, never bother with leftists. Forget about these political prostitutes. Aim higher. This was my instruction. Try to get into, into uh, large circulation established conservative media. Rich, filthy rich movie makers, intellectuals, so-called academic circles, cynical, egocentric people who can look into your eyes with angelic expression and tell you a lie. These are the most recruitable people, people who lack moral principles, who are either too greedy or too uh, suffer from self-importance. Uh, they feel that uh, they, they matter a lot. Uh, these are the people who KGB wanted very much to recruit. 